How's it going everybody? It's Aparicio. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, go ahead and subscribe. I'll be doing DaVinci Resolve videos twice a week, so you'll have plenty of content to come and learn. All right, today what we're gonna be doing is creating a Kodak 2383 film look, obviously using the LUT in DaVinci Resolve. And you guys are gonna wanna see how this is done. Uh, what we're gonna be focusing on is pushed highlights, push shadows, not breaking them. Nice color separation and very heavy weight, a heavy feel. That's what we're gonna be focusing on. You're gonna see just how easy this is. So let's dive right into it. All right, here's our shot, right? Pay attention because I'm gonna be moving kind of quick, all right? Ka-chow. So I have my color space transform little sandwich here. At the, at the color space transform at the end, instead of gamma 2.4, for my output gamma, I'm gonna put Cineon film lock. And then I'm gonna add a node after that, and I'm gonna to go to my LUTs and add a Rec. 709 Kodak 2383 D65 LUT. And I have added that to my footage, okay? And this is where we're gonna start. So I'm gonna go ahead and label all of these and keep them up there away from my other nodes. So we're gonna add three nodes and then when you add another node go ahead and add four parallels and then probably like three nodes at the end pretty easy node tree all right so the first node is going to be primaries all right now here i'm just going to kind of open it up a little bit the highlights over here are obviously gonna be crushed. I mean, they're a crushed in camera. I can't really do anything about it. So I'm just gonna kind of open the image up so I can play with it in my second node, which is gonna be my curves, okay? So in the primaries, I obviously just brought that the gain up, the lift down, the gamma up, and I'm just kind of opening the image. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast in the curves. Probably gonna do a, a classic S curve. So right now, guys, we're gonna push this image. And then at the end, we can go ahead and correct it with the saturation and the contrast. We can calm it down. But right now, we're driving in. We're going crazy, all right? You can't be afraid to go crazy when color grading. Who's gonna stop you? Nobody. And then, I just do WB for white balance. It's my balancing uh, node. I'm gonna go to my vector scope and just gonna balance it out, sitting a little warm. That looks balanced to me. I just brought the offset down a little bit towards the blue. That's looking good right there in the vector scope in the middle. All right, now the first node in the parallel node structure tree thingy. I am going to do my look. I wanna create separation from his skin and the background. So what's the furthest thing away from his skin tone? Psh, it's freaking uh, teal cyan over here. So I'm gonna bring my offset. I'm gonna be crazy with it, guys. I'm gonna be crazy with it. Boom, all right? And then, so I bring, brought my offset down toward the cyan blue teal. And then now I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring my lift up towards the orange kind of bring my blacks back to baseline. Look to see the blacks are looking black again, okay. And then I'm gonna go to my gamma, try to bring his skin back out a little bit. Just a little bit for there, we'll do more later. So let's see what we've done so far with the look. Oh my God, it's night and day. This is night and day. I'm gonna go crazy. Let's label this one CW skin for color warper skin all right i'm gonna go to my color warper and i'm gonna go down here and i'm gonna put it to 12. let's go crazy let's do no 12 is fine so 12 right here and i'm gonna grab his skin saturate it bring it towards the magenta and boom i'll park him right there the second one is cw green color warper green and i'm gonna grab the lettuce in the shot this lettuce was just thrown at this man's face by this woman. At work. I mean, he's probably already having a bad day. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing. Put this at 12, grab here, saturate it, bring it away from the orange, park it right there. 
That looks pretty sick. Now, let's see what we've done to both of these. Just totally separated the colors from the background. And then I'll use this last one as the saturation. And for that, I'm gonna go to my HDR palette and go to the saturation here and bring it down a little bit. Bring it back to reality a little bit. Here in this next node, I'm gonna add a power window to only his face. I'm gonna go ahead and go here and click right here to track back and forth in the whole shot. And then in this one, I'm gonna call this face. And I'm just gonna make his face pop a little bit more. I'm gonna go to my primary wheels and I'm gonna go to my log wheels. And I'm gonna bring up the midtones, bring down the shadows, and then bring up the highlights. Okay, bring up the shadows a little bit more, bring up the midtones. And I'm just kind of popping his face out more. And then now let's get into the film grain. And we'll go right here, we'll go to 35. We'll zoom in to see that grain. I'll increase the grain size a little bit. That's it. Put the opacity down. Be kind of subtle with it. So we'll label that FG for film grain. And then now what we're going to do is I always add a subtle vignette, I guess. Let's see how it looks here. We'll put the size all the way up and the global blend all the way down and then we'll creep up a little bit. I guess that's fine. And then we'll label that big. And now guys, we are looking pretty much done here. You could ex you could push it more, I guess, if you want. You know, we have clean shadows. Our highlights have a little bit of that teal blue in it, which is fine. And our skin is clean. I'm loving it. So there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed the video. I moved pretty quick. Look back through that video because I did move pretty fast. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe, help out the channel. But with that being said, I will see you in the next one.